All right, well, I guess this would be episode number three. And what we're talking about is how to go back and correct problems that have come up in training and have sort of developed into being pretty, pretty severe. But it applies to other things. Let's say that you're in a house and maybe it's your house and it's your dog and you say, go, you can't come in the kitchen. So the dog starts sneaking in the kitchen. And so you're constantly saying, you, know, you go back, you, you go to, go in the living room, go in the living room. And the dog is not obeying. He has a problem. Or every time you cast into the water, he goes that way, he won't, he won't. And it's gotten to the point, all of these problems get to a point where they become habits. What does everybody do? They get all ready with their equipment and they try to recreate this mistake. So they're, they're ready. So the dog comes out of the living room, sets foot in the kitchen, wang, there's the punishment. The dog is expected to get in the water. Here's the cast, wang, there's the, there's the punishment. <clears throat> You're trying to teach your dog to sit and every time a gun goes off, he's wiggling around online. So you're all set for him. You, you get a real close flyer, you shoot it and the dog moves and you make a huge correction. <clears throat> like I've said in the last two episodes, the same dogs keep making that same mistake. It doesn't work very well. So, what I, we're talking about now is re-teaching whatever the command is that is not working. And so we're using the sit command with Awesome Buck as a way to go through a, and it doesn't matter what the command is, it can be down, over, get out of the kitchen, whatever your, whatever your rule is that's being broken, the step is the same. You go back, you teach the command, then you reinforce it with the lead. Then you, you test it a little bit by saying, there like that, watch me, fetch. All right, sit. Now once you've gotten to that aspect and the command is now reliable. In other words, with Buck, when I say sit, 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 and if I drop a bumper, sit, sit, he's not gonna go after it. He knows he's not gonna move. His feet aren't moving, nothing is moving. He's looking at me to see if there's some chance he might be able to retrieve. Ready? All right, sit. So once you're at that point, then what do you think the next step is? You've reinforced it with the lead. Now you're going to reinforce it with the electric collar. So in, instead of going sit, 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 you're going nick, nick, sit. Good, good, that a boy, that a boy. Very good, sit, sit. You're reinforcing a command they're already doing. And then you go through the same thing, except we're gonna extend this now. So we're saying sit, 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 sit. A little at a time. Don't start at 10 feet and go to 10 yards and then 100 yards. It's 10 feet, 12 feet, 14 feet. Sit, 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 sit. You notice he's looking at me. He's not looking over there because he knows nothing's gonna happen without me giving him the command. Ready? Are you watching me? Ready? All right. 
sit. Out. So that's basically the sequence. Sit. So once, in this case, you can get farther and farther and farther away and still get the same result. Sit, 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 sit. Back. All right. Now you're sit. You're going to have to use your imagination. You're going to have to extend this a little at a time, a little at a time, a little more, a little more. Then, in the case of this, of the sit command, you're going to get a thrower. He's going to throw. He's going to throw and pick it up. He's going to walk around, throw it again. I'm going to be walking around here, and this guy is going to say, wait a minute, nothing happens till I get the cue to go. Now, if you're trying to be a dog trainer, what you have to do is take this example and you have to plug in the situation that you have, whether it's healing, getting in the water, not casting, whatever it is, you go backwards until you get to the actual command that's not being obeyed and you reteach it, except you do it slower, longer, more thorough. Don't rush this part. The longer it takes, the more it's going to be conditioned, the better the result is. You can change what was a problem into the strong suit of the dog. And that's what you can do, but it has to be done correctly. The tendency is to do this for about three times and say, okay, let's try it out in the field here, and oh, the dog moved. It didn't work. Your method didn't work, okay. Well, my response is, that's not my method. My method is being so thorough that nobody wants to watch because it's just taking forever and it's boring. But in the end, you have a dog that, when you say sit, he sits, and when you shoot a bird, he still sits, and he keeps sitting until you send him. Now, invariably, somebody's going to say, well, you're asking the dog to look at you and wait for your command before he goes. So how does that apply to a field work where you want your dog to look out into the field? Um, what we're doing here is conditioning the dog to wait for a command, to, to, to focus on me and wait for the command. Now as this progresses, and it seems pretty obvious to me, but nonetheless, some people ask. Once I get by the dog's side, he's not probably going to go like that, and there'll be a gun out there shooting a bird then he's still paying attention to me because he's been conditioned to pay attention to me and then I will send him. He doesn't have to look at me once he is conditioned to wait for me to give him a command that gets him what he wants. So once we have gunners in the field and I say watch him and he looks out there and they shoot a bird, he is still his psychology is still thinking about me and he's going to sit there and wait for me to give him what he wants. So please watch this on my blog, BillHillman.net. The page is going to come right up. It's going to be my blog. And please put in your email because what I'm going to be doing is periodically post something that I hope, or I think and, and hope, that you're going to enjoy or find useful. So until that next, the next thing comes up, 
Thanks for watching and have a great day.